I do think they're both very nice people. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. I'm not, yeah. And they both have great drag. Mm hmm But they were not good at Drag Race. It was total goonery and buffonery. Hey, everyone. It's Mira Mangle. And it's Scarlet Cyanide. And welcome to another Mangled Morning. Woo! Today is a very fun video, a very, uh, what could potentially be controversial, because today we're going to be talking about queens that have been favored on RuPaul's Drag Race. Ooh. Now, what we will do is we will go through some of the, like, we're not saying they're all favored. We're saying that it's been said that they were favored. We will decide if the way the judges treated them was generally fair, or if it was highly favored. <laughs> Before we get started, though, make sure you go ahead and hit that subscribe button. Like the video and join the Patreon where you can see all kinds of additional content you can't see on YouTube. Plus you're helping support the channel. Now you can also support the channel by tipping on Venmo like these fine folks did. Big shout out to Yutaka, Andrew P who said that um, I won last week's challenge. I um, mean, hopefully I don't end up in the bottom. Oh, good. <laughs> Dalton M who always watches with his husband. Clinny P. Who, who did the Aja quote? You're perfect, you're beautiful, you look Aww. like Valentina. I, a lot of these were, of course, for like Monday with the people who lived for the Madonna Good. last I'm, week. That was like good luck, girl. Tyler H, Enrique M, and Steve B. Aww. Thank y'all so much Thank for those you. tips. Yes. Your left bra thingy, boob. Mm. The, for some reason, this one has been difficult today. She's slipping out. Party Wanting tip. Wanting to meet the people. Yeah, that's your party tip. Speaking of that, last week, I needed to adjust something with my corset because uh, Esther made her first appearance on the channel. Oh, no. Esther Roll. Yeah. Because <laughs> she was rolling out of that corset. Oh. At the top. Uh, which made some of the looks, especially, I guess, luckily my hair and makeup were really good for Madonna. Because that that's all I could focus on. The fact that, like, my roll was coming out. Oh, but uh, she made her rolls. first appearance. Mm. So I'm like, hmm, she's real tight this week. What happened? <laughs> Who did this to me? Who did this to me? I guess me. I did that. All the buffalo mac and cheese. Oh, hey. <laughs> some folks in the new wrapped in red shirt and uh the glad you got to see me one we haven't seen that in a while hey. we've got ricardo there at the top and it was his birthday as well oh. i believe last week happy birthday ricardo yes happy birthday you look cute delta tana queen delta tana queen cute. i think that's how you say it. and the glad you got to see me shirt oh. and rocking a wig there mm -hmm. and uh then you got xander at the bottom there and it, he's one of our uh, patreon members too i believe oh hi xander yeah very you cute good. everyone two peace signs there Hey. Love that. Peace, love, and drag. Scarlett, where could you get uh, that shirt? Yeah. Those shirts. Uh, yeah, all the shirts and all the stickers and more at maramangle.redbubble.com. All right. Mm. Send me your photos and you'll be featured in a video. You ready to get started, gal? Let's do it. We're going to start off with season one, though, and uh, it's good old Rebecca Glasscock. Highly favored. I agree. I didn't start watching Drag Race regularly until season two, but back mm -hmm. then season one was always airing on Logo as well. And I just, even back then, I was just never, I never got it. And I know drag has evolved and changed so much, but even for me, way back in 2010, yeah. it still wasn't, it wasn't, I didn't get it. Me neither. Literally didn't get it. There were many times where she was in the top when I was like, what, did we watch the same thing? Times when she won. We kind of have beat it to death. Uh -huh. So maybe this will be the retirement of that conversation. But Hopefully. yeah, the makeover, <laughs> this is from the makeover. She, what she's wearing right now, she won the challenge. I know. And especially when you compare her to like some of the other queens, it just felt like they were really harsh on others. And they were just generally highly, they high, highly favored her. Because she, she made it to literally the top. Top three. Yeah. So, yeah. and I was confused the entire time. Yeah. She only got cut like right before the top two lip sync. Yep. Season two, there's a lot of people that say that Tyra was favored. Yeah. I would disagree. I would disagree. I would with that say as well. she had was generally fair. They're thinking about her in the workroom as well. Mm -hmm. The judges aren't seeing that though. Right. If you were to just watch the runways each week or the main challenge, mm -hmm. you'd be like, Tyra's been killing it. It was fair that the judges yeah. loved her so much. In terms of her actual performance, she was pretty much flawless up yeah. except for like the one challenge the challenge she had immunity for, which was the rocker challenge. Like oh, she could have been in the bottom yeah, for that. Yeah. But hey, she won the week before yeah, and had immunity. Still had immunity. What are you gonna point, do? So yeah. She was the first queen that took the presentation aspect of the mm -hmm. runway to a whole nother level. Oh yeah. She, I mean, you never forget, even though like the girls came for her that day, the the, the wedding, wedding the way she Ugh. delivered that was just stunning. It was. And so many of the looks, she would do like three in one looks. Totally, yeah. No one was asking for that back then. Exactly, but she like was bringing it to the runway hard. Yeah. You know, there's that whole Beyonce curse, but out of the three Snatch Game Beyonce's, she actually was pretty good. Yeah. She wasn't in the bottom for that yeah. and she didn't deserve to be. Right. Because she was funny. She had funny lines in there. Now jumping to season three, we have two here. We have Raja and we have Carmen Carrera. Mm, now yes. Raja, I would say that it's blatantly obvious from episode one 
that there's people who are there that know her very well. For instance, Mike Ruiz, the photographer, yes. was the judge and the photographer in that first episode and clearly knew her very well from Top Model. I would agree in a sense that like she sometimes, it felt like she got overpraised in time, mm -hmm. in moments. Mm -hmm. Like this cake ball is what that photo's from and she won that challenge designing that look. She had the white undergarment showing. Yeah, the petticoat or and whatever And it was kind was. of like sometimes stuff like that yeah. would maybe get a little bit overlooked when I would think that for that challenge, like that could have taken her out of contention to actually win the challenge. Yeah. I don't know. I do agree with a lot of that, but I also think, I think for Raja, it's fair. I think there is some conflict of interest with just how well known she already was coming onto the show. But I think if you just look at challenges and runway, it's kind of like Tyra. Like, it's kind of hard to debate she is, she, that she wasn't no, yeah. slaying, you know what I mean, killing it. And like, we, and we talk about this all the time, like Raja essentially changed Drag Race forever by being on it. She brought the runway to like a high fashion model type of vibe that we see it as yeah. now. Overall, I don't think anyone could really say, I mean, I'm sure you could find somebody. Mm -hmm. She is like the undisputed winner of season three. I would say Carmen was very highly flavored. Uh, yeah, favored. I was gonna say, I think Carmen was highly favored. She was just so beautiful, but really was not doing great no. in a lot of the challenges and Usually then never. relied a lot on the body selling the body right. aspect for the runway and i mean and she even got brought back like they brought her back she got a double save and she, got brought back she got a double save she and broke got the rules back. after they were told not to go back up and on the you know leave the stage and mm -hmm. she went up and kissed all the judges and got a double save with that uh-huh then they brought her back again mm -hmm. like the season is ex <laughs> extendedly longer because of carmen because they kept bringing her back yeah they did and it was back when you know when they had the judges make the decision and and michelle Michelle was like hard on her, but also very soft on her at the time because it was Michelle's first season. Mm -hmm. And it was like, she's she was Michelle's Jersey girl, all of that, yeah. you know. Also controversially, I'll say, this might be a un unpopular opinion. When the queens get brought back and then they go home in that same episode, I don't like that that sp spot they came back in is considered their placement. Like she's considered top five. Oh, But yeah. she, she had just gone home the week before to Shangela and Shangela made it to the top five. Yeah. Like, Shangela should be considered the top, top five, five, not Karma. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, I, that always bugs me. Up next, again, speaking of queens that the judges bring back, it's Lil Kenya Michaels yeah. for season four. I don't know, this is a tough call for me. Yes, they loved her, and I feel like at times she was highly favored, but I also think she really held her own in a lot of ways, too. I thought she was cute. And funny, usually had a good runway. I would say for Billy B, she was highly favored. Yeah, for Billy B, she was highly favored. Billy B was this, luckily, was his last season on mm -hmm. as a regular judge, filling in for Santino. But um, and she got brought back too. She did. Get, yeah, yeah, she got brought back she as got well. Brought back the judges well. chose her as well. They did. Even though she like with Carmen, at least like she was the person that went home right before Shangela. Mm -hmm. Kenya had been gone for a little while. Oh yeah. So you know what? Maybe she is highly favored. Maybe I'll switch my vote to that. It's hard to say because like specifically. Billy B was a huge part of the judges that year. Mm -hmm. And with him, he, she was extremely highly favored. Like there was times where she could have been in the bottom. Like even like some of the acting challenges basically blamed other people for her casting, yes. right? Like it was someone else's fault for casting her in the wrong role, not necessarily her fault her for fault not meeting the goal. Yeah. Right. Up next, season five, we have Alaska. Wow. Now Alaska controversially got maybe, especially in the first half of the competition, yes. maybe some free passes. I think so. Specifically, there's one episode where it's still kind of stunning she wasn't in the bottom and it's when they did the lip sync, lip sync extravaganza. Mm. She played Fifi O'Hara and was one of the only people besides Serena Cha Cha that literally, I mean, she hardly got any of the words right. She just kept moving her hands in front of her face, but you could still see she wasn't getting the words. No, which is so funny because it was literally like, I don't know. She should playing. she should have known every <laughs> word to that. She should have known every word of that. Yeah, I think for part of the season, she was definitely highly favored until she just got more into her own. I don't know, can she get like half of both from me? Yeah, I would say that the first half of the competition, it did feel like she got passes from not being in the bottom. Yes. I mean, even the challenge where she didn't get in drag for the, the kids. 
oh, they yeah. were not happy with they her. They were so unhappy. So. Well, and even to her defense, though, like she did do well. She did well, and I, she was still kind of draggy. Also, the very first episode when she like gives up in the dunk tank. Yes, that's so true. Yeah. So there's a couple opportunities where I mean, the worst one though is that lip sync episode. She should have been in the bottom two. Yeah, she, it should have been her and Sabrina Cha Cha. Sure enough. Moving on to season six, we have Binda La Creme and Darian Lake. Yeah. Yes. Now, Dela, of course, got the double save mm -hmm. when, you know, a lot of folks say she didn't necessarily, like, Darian beat her, right? Yeah. So she got a free pass there, even though Ben slayed the competition up until that point. She did. Then that very next episode is the stand-up episode. She was on level with Laganja in terms of cringe. Oh, yeah. You know, they point out the fact that Jocelyn at least got a couple laughs in there. Yes. Ben did not. Why don't you tell us a joke? As a viewer, even not even being in the room, you couldn't understand anything she was saying. It was bad. It was yeah, really bad. It was... I would say that was a free pass, too. That was a complete free pass. Just those two episodes, it was, yeah, she she got safe from being, going home, and then the very next one is this one where... Uh, but then, you know, the rest of the competition that she does remain, like the talk show, she does great. Yeah. She does do well in the makeover and stuff like that. I think with a lot of these girls, we're going to get into it. Like, were they favored at some point? Yes. Yeah. Did they deserve and earn... Their spot. Their spot, also yes. Right. And I think with Bendela, that is very much it. Because I mean, she killed. She obviously didn't win the Rusical, but like the yeah. you know, but she was, she was amazing mm -hmm. for that. that was, and for her to even stand up to Courtney and Adore and something like exactly. that. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. So with Ben, I think I'm gonna do a fairly generally fair. Generally fair. I am on the fence mm -hmm. because I mean, if you think about that, at least the the stand up challenge. Yeah. She should have been in the bottom two. Other than that, I think the rest of it is fair. So I'll, as a whole, I'll give it a fair. When it comes to Darian Lake, mm -hmm. picture that we have here is the is the girl group. Yeah, what was MC Control Top or something like that? What was her name? Mm -hmm. The Peony Hose? Something like that. And the, the yeah. bottom two ended up being Milk and Trinity. Trinity. Yeah. I think a lot of folks would say that she should have been the bottom over Milk because at least Milk made him laugh. Milk had moments. Yeah. Darian was not able to have moments. That was when Milk had that really bad outfit. Yeah, that's true. And they were like, never try around in that dress okay. right oh my god that would have been amazing to have a trinity versus durian lip sync that would have been but that song i mean tkb it was the what a man yeah so oh. she, darian would have gone home i think darian is right along honestly to me how benla yeah is i mean were there times where they threw her a bone. a bone absolutely but overall i think she did earn her spot in that competition and fought really hard mm -hmm. so i'm still gonna give her a uh fair and i mean she was in the bottom bottom two three times yeah. so it's not like they didn't put her in the bottom at some point like a lot of the times we'll see with queens where they just they won't even put them in the bottom mm -hmm. or they put her in the bottom they realize oh she can't really <laughs> we don't want to lose her right can't we don't want to lose there. her so we can't put her down yeah there exactly i mean honestly that's kind of what it seems like yeah definitely moving on to season seven earl and miss fame highly yeah, favored I highly yeah highly favored honestly for both <laughs> i want to say I, I i'm sure i'm wrong but i would say that Miss Fame has to be on a level of the most bottom three low without being in the bottom two ever. Ever. I mean, she is, besides I think like the first episode or so, she is in the bottom three almost every single week. Yeah. And then they take queens like Candy Ho and Jaden, and the second they mess the up, second they, mess they would up, throw them out. in the bottom. Yep, absolutely. It was so frustrating as a viewer. Pearl. Wake up, Pearl. I mean, we're looking at the lip sync where she should have gone home against Trixie. We saw that uh, Trixie slayed her, and for some reason, they kept her. Uh huh. And then we saw her lip sync again to Miss Fame, who finally, Pearl was finally the one to send her home. I yeah. mean, it was, that's another moment we've talked about too much, but um, mm -hmm. should have been a double elimination for both should of them. Should have been, it was a terrible lip sync. <laughs> Pearl did have some really shining moments. Uh, specifically, her best moment to me on the show was the time she wasn't even in the top, which yeah. was Snatch Game. Yeah. Uh, big Ange, right? Big yeah. Ange, yeah. She was just safe for that. Miss Fame is, I would say, even worse because Miss Fame didn't ever have those redeeming moments throughout the competition. Oh, no, no, she really didn't. I mean, she was beautiful and like her looks would be stunning and her makeup would be stunning. But in the challenges, she was just completely like shutting down most of the time. And then even going back to Snatch Game, like, she, you know, she did the Donatella Versace and, and Jaden and Max were in the bottom, right? Max mm -hmm. was not good at all right. Jaden okay. made them laugh at least a couple times but then yeah. they were like oh it's just too repetitive 
But Miss Fame never had a single joke. Miss no. Fame was never funny. No. Why does she get that pass again? Right. Why are we back doing this again? Privilege. Moving on. Moving on to season eight. We've got Kimchi and Derek Barry are the two that folks say. Really? I'm surprised at Kimchi. Really? You've never heard that? No, I had not heard that. So there's a couple instances where people say that she should have been in the bottom and she wasn't. This is one of them, that commercial challenge. They didn't like Thorgies, right? But they liked parts of Chi Chi's. Yeah. But yeah, this is when she's like, what a fat ass or whatever. But, in the commercial. And she really struggled and she yeah. probably had the actual worst commercial. I think so too. Okay, yeah. In that episode specifically, I now remember this look. It's because she looks so sad. Like she just looked the most like pathetic little baby And I think in she the actually world. was crying. Snatch game. Again, talk about being repetitive. They only, first of all, they only actually show yeah, one joke she does. Where she is like. All of Snatch Game. Yeah. One joke. But that's what she did throughout the entire thing. Mm. Jaden got put in the bottom two for that last year. I think that Snatch Game was definitely a pass. And she wasn't even in the bottom three. She was just safe for Snatch Game. Right. I think Acid Betty was better than Kim Chiu in Snatch Game. Yeah, no, that's true. Still wasn't great, but I you know what I'm so saying. Too. Let's talk about, which is one of the worst challenges ever. The Ruko's Empire. Yeah. Oh, you know what? She was really bad in that show. She was, to me, the worst out of any of them. You know what? Oh, God, this is like... This is hard, and I don't know why I never put her into this, like, box. The problem was with Kim Chi, a lot of times they didn't even put her, like, they wouldn't put her in the bottom three, they would put her as safe. That's true. So the, you wouldn't even think about it again. Okay, well then maybe, she, yeah, maybe the wool is just been pulled so far out of my eyes, um, I didn't even realize any of that. So maybe she was highly favored throughout it. I would say she was. All right. I would say she was. They basically learned from the past mm -hmm. few seasons where they loved her artistry and what she did on the runway and all yeah. of that, and knew she was a great competitor mm -hmm. that they didn't risk it. Mm. They didn't risk putting her in the bottom when maybe yeah. there's weeks she deserved to. Sounds fair. Now, Derek Barry is, I mean, we heard that not only off the show, but on the show too. The girls would kind of say that. The girls were saying there's weeks she should have been in the bottom too. Mm. So for instance, this is one of them. It's her, Nasha, and Chi Chi doing the rectangle girls oh, of the yeah, world. yeah, the rectangle girls of the world. Yeah. <laughs> now she got praised though by the judges because she looked like Debbie Harry in the main challenge. Yeah. Kind of, you know, so she did get praised that we saw there. Mm -hmm. I do think that like out of the out of that three of them in that group, Chi Chi was by far the best. Oh, like yeah. her vocals were amazing. I think so too. Uh, but Chi Chi was put in the bottom two instead of Derek. Yeah. I would say that week for sure. That week for sure. But I mean, I can't think of any others offhand. Me neither, because honestly, they were pretty fairly hard on Derek. They expected a lot of her. And she was in the bottom twice. She was in the bottom. They made her change her eyebrows. They gave her a lot of feedback of like, this is what we want to see you do differently. Kind of every week. Right. She yeah. was low a lot. She was, she low, was low a lot. I think I'm going to give Derek a, a fair because to me, it, she didn't make it far enough in the competition and didn't get enough praise for it to warrant a highly favored. Mm -hmm. It was more like you just weren't as bad as the other bottom two, but you still yeah. didn't do great. That was kind of like the feedback she got through the whole show. Right. I would say with the exception of the one episode where it was Chi Chi and Nash in the bottom, that's the only week where I could say that she probably could have been, mm -hmm. but it's, you know, she was only in the bottom twice, but for such a short season, mm -hmm. it was like less girls than normal. It's not that crazy. Yeah. I think that Kim got more passes than Derek did, yeah. honestly. I do think that Kim was a stronger competitor overall. And like Kim though was different because because they didn't put her in the bottom a lot, like low or, you know, bottom three a lot. A lot of folks didn't notice it till after the fact. Yeah. Up next, we're jumping to season nine and it's Valentita. Yes. Now, of course, her feedback is more that they just lived for her when she was maybe doing less than some of the other girls. Mm. I felt like I didn't see that. I could see why it would frustrate the other girls and especially like learning after the fact that maybe she wasn't as pleasant behind the scenes as well. I could see the other girls mm. feeling that way. But like, she just oozes charisma and she is that girl. Yeah, I yeah, I don't get a favored vibe from Valentina because I think she really delivered. She did, really yeah. delivered the whole season. She was only ever bad to me just in that one episode. In that one episode. She went home. Yeah, and I mean, they made a, they made her start the thing over. Like, it's not like they just let her lips right. with her mask on. And they didn't, they sent her home. And they sent her home, yeah. They so. were like, this is not acceptable. Now jumping to season 10, we have Eureka O'Hara and Cameron Michaels. Mm. Now, um, Eureka, what they say is she was just kind of favored in general because of her personality. Mm -hmm. Maybe challenges that she, she played a lot of the same character, like a big baby a lot. We saw that. She won a couple times with that. Mm -hmm. And then Cameron because she was saved a lot, even though she did lip sync a lot. Yeah, so sorry. She lip synced a lot. The, you know, she won every time. Yeah, I mean, but the, the lip syncs that she won, she won. That's what I was gonna say is it, it is hard because we've talked about before with the last couple she did, we wanted to see more from Cracker and Monet. 
But she did slay it every time. Every time. But I mean, it is a little bit controversial in terms of like, especially by the time we got to the Cracker one. Mm -hmm. We'd seen her do a lot of the same moves. Uh, but Cracker just didn't. The song was so sexy and Cracker just didn't do that at all. Right. So it's like, what do you do? Yeah, what do you do? I don't know. For me, I don't think in either one of these queens work should be lumped into the highly favored I don't think category. So I think, I think it was fair. I think it's very fair. I think Eureka, whether people like her personality or not, she's killing it. She was able to make it work for the challenges. Absolutely. And then Cameron had a lip sync a lot and had to fight her way through it. Yeah. Moving on to season 11, we have two here. We have Nina West and Plastique Tiara. <laughs> Honestly, I think they're both highly favored. I agree. <laughs> This is not controversial. This is not controversial to me at all. That, and I will say, you use this sh a shady little picture for Nina up there. Well, I try to use images that, that are referencing what we're talking about. Okay. So that is definitely, I mean, any design challenge Nina did, she should have been in the bottom. And mm. she was always low. She should have been in the bottom too. Week one yeah. and the week she made that corn look. Mm -hmm. Like she she got some passes she for, for looks. She slayed comedy. One thing to keep in mind too, that we don't know for sure, because sometimes it seems to play a factor and sometimes it doesn't. Mm -hmm. If you were to be in a pageant, the critiques are almost like a Q and A, because you yeah. talk to the judges, you get feedback, you do all that. She kind of always slayed that, right? And I think that that could be a reason she was safe in some of those cases. She has a lot of charisma. There's no doubt in my mind, she should have been bottom two both of those times. So I would definitely say highly favored. First of all, with Plastique, they called Vanjie out every week for wearing like a corset. Mm -hmm. She did it a lot. I know, A she lot sure as well. And they never called her out for that at all. No, and she was, for me, Plastique was very repetitive. Played in some almost of the same characters every too. Every way, like in challenges, how she played characters, looks. It was just repetitive to me. Mm -hmm. Like she really wowed me the first like few episodes, and then after that, I was like, oh no, like we're this seeing is the same it. same thing this over and over, over and over and over again. I think Plastique is just because she was just so stunning. Yeah. Now that week that she did win the challenge, that the one of the times Nina should have been the bottom, the farm to runway, they're setting you up to win this week. Mm -hmm. And it's so interesting they actually left that in too because it did feel like that. It did. Alyssa came in, her drag mom. Uh -huh. Then Rue was like, I'm your new mommy, mm -hmm. you know, and did the whole hug. Like it was an amazing episode for her. And that was an episode where I was like, oh, she's gonna make it to top four. Yeah. And so I was actually gagged though that she ended up going. Yeah, she did. And that Vanjie sent her home, who was in the bottom a lot. So yeah. this Vanjie got that revenge in the end, huh? Yeah, like, definitely. <laughs> I've been getting critiqued the whole time for the corset, but I'm gonna send you home. Exactly. Now, the most we've ever had, season 12. Oh, uh, yeah. Uh, we have Gigi Good, Crystal Method, Sherry Pie, and Ooh, Jackie Cox. Yeah. I would say in one way or another, all four are more highly favored. I think so too. I think it goes back to season seven. Instead of it being Jaden and Candy Ho, this time it was Heidi and Britta. Yeah. Put in the bottom over and over yeah. again in order to avoid putting some of these folks in the bottom. Absolutely. I think with Sherry and Gigi, they both really slayed the first half of the season. Mm -hmm. But they both really were struggling a lot throughout the second half and um, got a lot of free passes. They got, yeah, they got to write on their laurels. At least with Crystal, she did a lot of stuff that just surprised me. Um, but I, I agree with you. I think all these girls were highly favored, and yeah. they would they would move mountain and, mountains to make sure that they didn't have to lip sync or be in the bottom. Right. Much. So with Gigi, the times that are the controversial times where she got passes would definitely be. I mean, the worst is, um, well, there's two that are probably equally bad. The commercial she made, yeah. where she's like, hi, I'm better than you. And then there's like no jokes in it at all. Yeah. It was horrible. It was horrible. It was horrible. Mm -hmm. And that was the week that Jan and Widow were in the bottom. And, and yes, Jan's was high energy. And yes, Widow's was like the throat thing. Oh, yeah. But they at least had concepts. Gigi's was just like, it was basically a, a bad version of Katya Spray. Yes. Um, and then the uh, debate. She was the worst in the debate that we oh saw. Oh my gosh, it was the so bad. Worst. It was so bad. Again, both times Widow got sacrificed. I know, literally, you're right. There's no reason she shouldn't have been mom for both of those. Mm -hmm. I mean, even her stand-up thing was not good either. No. Then jumping to Sherry, talk about stand-up episode. She was the one that broke the time. We didn't get to see a lot of it though. They cut a lot of it out, yeah. which we, we never know how much that plays into to everything with her. It's insane to me that she wasn't on the bottom because like you said, Broke the rules, didn't like her stand up, never got to the point of whatever, like, wasn't it like a fish or yeah. something? Talking with the fish or being the fish, I don't know. yeah. Well, and then same thing with the same episodes that Gigi struggled in, the debate, she wasn't good. Nope. She did, she did her Snatch Game again. Yeah. The commercial, her commercial was horrible as well. Mm -hmm. Like, she's the comedy queen and her commercial wasn't funny. No. Both of them, second half of the competition. Yeah. With Crystal, a lot of times Crystal fell a little bit more middle of the pack. Mm -hmm. But it's, it felt like she did get passes because it seemed like Rue was really in love with her. Yeah, was this, she was like Rue's... Eldabarge? Yeah. <laughs> that kind of, that 
in general seemed like it was like it would save her somehow yeah that gaze anatomy challenge where it's her and Heidi stuck together on the fork. Oh, yeah. Like, they had equal... Like, they both just had a couple of little lines. Uh-huh. Why would Heidi be in the bottom? I mean, obviously, it was part of that was her runway. Right. But, and then... And that Crystal. Chris, yeah, like, mm. Heidi was not any better or worse than Crystal was. They yeah. were the same. Yeah. Stuff like that is just kind of odd with, with her, sometimes with her performances. She kind of was able to blend in the background. Now, Jackie Cox also seemed to very much be favored. Mm-hmm. The Madonna challenge yeah. is, it's criminal that she wasn't in the bottom two. Yeah. It's one of the most iconic Madonnas. It's one of the sexiest Madonnas besides the one Jada did, the sexiest. And she literally brought none of that to the vocals in any way. None of it. Or with the performance. It was so disappointing. You, Michelle was literally so upset. Like, and they kind of tell. made her safe based on her Michelle runway. Yeah. Which, it was good, but like, her performance was bad enough that she should have not been safe. Because it agree. was... It was, again, Heidi and Britta in the bottom. I would have put Britta and Jackie in the bottom because Heidi had the hardest Madonna, the yeah. current day Madonna. Heidi danced her butt off, she did, did tricks, all of that. She brought it as hard as she possibly could with what she was given, yeah. literally. But Jackie had one of the easiest, easiest Madonnas and was given a free Couldn't pass. deliver. Could Couldn't not deliver. deliver at all. Yeah, and I mean, she got a double save and I don't think it was deserved and... Exactly. Like, it was just... You could tell they did not want to send her home for they like not. whatever reason. They were just holding on to her as long as they could. Yeah, mm -hmm. she absolutely, the double save was not warranted. <laughs> yeah. Jumping to season 13, we've got Candy Muse and Tinta Burnter, two mm. New York City queens. I don't know that Candy was. Candy was in the bottom of the Yeah, a Candy times. was in the bottom. Three times. They critiqued her pretty hard. She did get the double save, though. She did get the double save, but I think that it was deserved. Like, I do, too. I think it was great. And they actually, Sean, or told her to sashay away. Mm -hmm. Like, they kind of, like, I mean, she they was kind of sobbing. Like, yeah, she was, like, sobbing. Mm -hmm. in the, in the, oh, wait, Candy. I don't know. So, to me, I don't think she was highly favored. I think she had to really fight for her yeah. spot and really overcome a lot. I feel like a lot of the folks, in my mind, that say that she was favored just didn't like her because they didn't like her personality. Yeah, that's how I feel, too. I miss Tina Burner, though. <laughs> Tina Burner is definitely like the Nina West in terms of getting free passes because yeah. of your name. Yeah. I, I mean, mean, there was so many instances where she could have been in the bottom. She and, could uh, and it wasn't. Yeah. For no reason. I mean, the obviously the most glaring is definitely the makeover. Mm -hmm. That was like the final straw where the world was like, how yeah. are they safe? What in the world? And I mean, just the runways in general, the makeup struggles, a lot of that stuff, we didn't see a lot of critiques on it up until the very end, you know? Really, yeah. Tina Burner was definitely highly favored. I agree. Now we're gonna jump to some international ones. We have two Ooh. UK gals. Season one of UK, it's Cheryl uh, Hole. Yeah. I almost said Cole. And then Lawrence Chaney from season two. Oh, interesting. So Cheryl, there's times where, for instance, this one where people think that she should have been in the bottom for that. Mm. There's a lot of speculation where people think that Cheryl was not put in the bottom two until specifically the, the Cheryl, Cheryl episode. episode. But yeah. for me, I mean, first of all, this look, I still don't understand why she was in the bottom three. Baga should have been in the bottom three over her. Yeah. Talk about highly favored. Like some of the looks Baga was favored. Oh. Uh -huh. She could be on here too. Yeah. Cause hers was way worse than Cheryl. I thought Cheryl's was adorable. I thought, yeah, I don't know. Like to me, Cheryl was one of those girls that had to like fight for her spot in the top. I mean, she didn't, she never won. There's very few queens that would have been able to beat her if they did put her in the bottom two. So why not put her in the bottom two? Exactly. Like, you know, she, yeah, she was their lip sync assassin. Lawrence Chaney, there were times I thought that she was favored. I would say, cause you know, obviously the first half of the competition before they went on their break, she was absolutely slaying. She was oh, the yeah. front runner. Cause she, she was, I think there was only four episodes before the break, and I think she had won two. Mm -hmm. uh, so she was slaying it. Yeah. The second half when they came back, there's times where she could have been the actual bottom two, and she wasn't. She did get put there once, though. She did. There's a couple at the end, like the stand-up challenge. Mm. She wasn't very funny, and no, she should have been. that's true. Taste was our girl who kept getting put in the bottom, and I didn't think she always deserved it. That's true. The other time that I thought Taste was one of the absolute best in the challenge, and I didn't understand was that acting challenge where they did the like East Enders parody. Oh yeah. Taste was hilarious yeah, in the challenge. I like I thought Taste was the best in that challenge. So I was literally gagged when she was in the bottom two. They mm -hmm. hated her runway. I don't know. I wouldn't say that she was favored. I would just, the only thing I would say is that Taste was unfairly, unfairly. disfavored. Yeah, disfavored. Yeah, that's how I feel too. Jumping mm -hmm. to Canada, we've got Rita Baga. 
Uh, this dress. I She won with that dress. I know she won with the dress, and I'm very upset. It's like, they're like, wow, you made a coat. Congratulations. Even though she took it off, revealed this actual piece of fabric wrapped around her body, and then she still won. And then Starzy didn't get any credit for the uh, coat that she made. Right. Anyway, and Starzy should have, was not only just safe, she should have been in the top yeah, and won. Yeah, absolutely. So, like, did I think Rita Vega had good, had good moments? And was she a good competitor? Yeah, but there are so many times yeah. where I was like, she's here because she's Rita Baga. There's definitely times too where she, when she won the challenge, yeah. I don't think she was one of the best. And there was times where I genuinely thought she was just gonna be safe. Yes. Like like you said, she is. She was by far, by far one of the absolute best competitors on the season. Mm -hmm. But there were times where either I don't think she deserved the win or she could have, I mean, even this look, I would have put this gal towards the bottom. Oh my God, yeah, this is- She could have been bottom three. I don't know about atrocious. bottom two, but bottom three. I gotta give Rita the highly favored throughout the season. It's like they really yeah. wanted to make sure she got to the end. She did pick up momentum. She's being praised, because they all knew her. It's like, she's a huge name, of course, yeah. right? It's very much like Nina West, Poopy Poison, Tina Burner exactly. levels they, of they like, didn't wanna, like, she's already a name. Yeah, they didn't want to lose it on their Pride booking. Because she said, didn't she book Pride? She said she broke Pride. So they're like, no, we got to get that good pride booking. We can't put her in the bottom. Brooklyn's like, I don't know if there'll be a season two. I need a job. Exactly. Uh, I got to work at Rita's club. We've watched so many seasons of Drag Race now, international, not in English, in English, whatever, where I don't know the characters at all and yeah. can laugh hysterically. I mean, we just saw a Spain season where literally everyone but one person on Snatch Game was unbelievably Amazing. funny. Absolutely. We didn't know a single character besides Mona Lisa, who was horrible. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and people were like, well, if you know her, it shouldn't, it, that's not how Snatch Game works. That's literally like, I don't, I don't have to know the character. Like they should be selling me the fantasy. Like right. when I think of Lil Edie, Jinx Munson, yeah. I think, it, you know what I'm saying? I didn't right. know who Lil Edie was before that, but it didn't matter. Right. I still have no clue who Envy Peru did on Snatch Game for Holland, but it still was one of the funniest it things was. ever. It still makes me laugh every time. Absolutely. I think she earned her spot in the top three, yeah. but yeah, in general, General, she was highly favored. Mm -hmm. Moving on to Holland, two gals who made it to the finale. We've got Miss Abby, oh my God, and Mama Queen. Yeah. Both highly favored for me. Both highly favored, 100%, especially Abby. They, oh. Fred was in love with girl. Abby. She's gorgeous. She, I, also, let's just say this too. I think I love every queen on this list. Oh, yeah. Like, I love Rita Bagger. Oh, yeah. I love both of these queens. Yeah, I know. We're sounding like, you know, bitter, bitter buddies, but we're, we're not We're just talking about the be... performance on the show. Yeah, we're just talking about the performance. You all know that. When it comes to Abby, it was very apparent in the final episodes that that poor little girl should not have been there. Yeah. In my opinion. I think Abby lip synced four or five times. Mm -hmm. Like, one of the most saves, like, most wins ever in terms of lip syncs mm -hmm. uh, in a single season. There's a couple of those times she could have gone. Like, yes. we were ready. Yeah. There was other people, too, like, like for instance, Chelsea Boy and Sutter Jean mm -hmm. that didn't get enough praise for the work they were doing. I know, like, they could have had some, throw them some bones, like, kept them from a lip sync or whatever, right. but... I think with Mama uh, Queen, her one win was the acting challenge, and I think that was controversial. Mm -hmm. I think she was good in it, but I think Sutter Jean and Envy Peru were actually even better. Yeah. But they really loved her. She had a great runway that week, all of that, you know. Also, I would say that I can't think of anyone where either I thought her runway was one of the best things I've ever seen, <laughs> Or I just did not like it in any yeah. way, shape, or form. She was just biggest hit or miss. She has some of the best looks in, in Drag Race history. Oh, yeah. She also has some of the worst. Yeah, it's kind of crazy. Like, when her taste level was there, it was, like, excellent. Mm -hmm. But then it could have gone south. You never like, knew what you were going to get that day. They got put in a bottom three once. A three-way lip sync. And they mm -hmm. both were both saved. Mm -hmm. And then they were they got a double save at the very end to make it to the top yeah. four. Remember that? Yeah, totally do. Makeover challenge, her dad came in and it was everyone's family except mm -hmm. for Chelsea Boy. Interesting because she got put in the bottom and her look was stunning. But yeah. the the story of their relationships played a much bigger factor than the visual of the actual makeover. Because yeah. I think I think she actually had the worst makeover. I think she did too. Also, Abby was in the top for that same challenge. I know. And they were just wearing Halloween costumes. I know. And I, and I say that sitting here as a woman in a Halloween costume. I know that. <laughs> but you're not competing right now on any of the drag races. Not at the moment. No. So, yeah. All right. I mean, ugh. Uh, at a level that is unprecedented, uh, we've got Down Under, oh. Art Simone, and Karen from Finance. Highly favored. The biggest highly favored. The most. This the might, most. This might top season seven in terms of, like, the most ridiculous. It yeah. does. Not not my. It, it is. Does. It's no, a, yeah. Again, I think they're probably both lovely people. I do think they're both very nice people. Oh, yeah. 
Absolutely. I'm not, yeah. And they both have great drag. Mm-hmm. But they were not good at drag race. It was total goonery and buffoonery at every tur twist and turn. <sighs> Just the fact that art gets brought back for no reason. For none. There's three people eliminated and they bring back the one white girl. Yeah. Why is that? Yeah. No explanation. Neither one of them actually ever did well besides that first episode where Kieran won and art was in the top. Yeah. I don't think that either one of them were successful in any challenge going forward. Literally none. Yeah. Karen got so many safes when it, I don't think it was Her warranted. lip sync was horrible. Her lip sync was terrible. That talent show. It's one of the worst episodes ever of Drag Race. It was just like we weren't even watching the same show is what the judges were saying. Mm -hmm. It just felt like there was some sort of contract or something to make sure that they both made it to the final four. Exactly, yeah, it was just so forced and pushed. After Snatch Game, it just never made sense. It was infuriating, Every honestly, week. like, I mean, well, I mean, hey, we stopped watching it. We did, it's the, I mean, in the year and a half we've been doing this now, it's the only season we ever stopped reacting to. Mm -hmm. Jumping to Spain, which is just brand new baby, oh, just ended. Yeah. yeah. Uh, we do have two little babies though that seem to be favorite at moments, uh -huh. uh, from what folks say, Dovima. And we've got Uga Feo. I definitely think Dovima was highly favored. The oh, judges yeah. just live for her and cried for her. It was very pearl, pearlescent to me. Yeah. <laughs> pearl. yeah. Pearlesque. I think she's a good queen and she's beautiful and stunning, but there were just many times where Dovima got completely free passes. Yeah, it felt as if they just really enjoyed her runways or her presence, whatever it is. Mm. Uga Feo. The only real call outs for her would definitely be that girl group challenge in episode two. Oh yeah. Even though she had just won episode one, for that second episode, first, this look we're looking at didn't fit the runway at all, mm -hmm. even though it's stunning. It is. Probably the worst verse in the entire uh, cut, yeah. you know? So she was very fortunate not to be in the bottom two that week. Yeah. I would say other than that, she performed for pretty well and she only made it to Snatch Game, so it's not like she made it to the end. Right, I was gonna say, it's, she wasn't on the top, honestly, very often. Oh no, she she won the lip sync for Snatch Game. Hugo Feo was not in the top enough for me to consider her highly favored. I would say it was generally fair. I would yeah, say that one favorite, episode yeah. is probably the only one that's controversial in terms of her placement. All right, well, that's all the queens we had to discuss today about being highly favored or generally fair. Let us know your thoughts on some of these, or if there's anyone we missed. I would say the only one that came to mind while we're doing this was a uh, bag of chips, maybe. Like, yeah. she got some passes with Runaways as well. Yeah. Well, we're going to head on out of here, and we are so glad you got to see us. Bye! Bye! <laughs>